In the pool. In the pool. In the pool. Yeah. And like I said, plenty. So that's just the basics. What really makes this gold is the potential to create a complete mind game just off a back turn down four alone. That have your opponent feeling like. And really, all you need is just good observation skills. Like 80% of this is just paying attention to how your opponent responds. The rest is having an answer for their behavior. Being able to crouch dash out of crouch helps too. Because if you know your opponent isn't the most attentive and will always just match for their turn back, then you already know what to do. But if you know the opponent is more likely to type to back dash or freeze up after a fast low point, then they are inviting a mix. That's a free ticket to CD straight into the house sweep or down forward 4. And it's worthwhile to learn how to CD into down forward 4, as down forward 4 can technically be made safer than while standing 1 due to the threat of its extensions. From there, your opponent's going to start catching on, or maybe not, but they will eventually want to prevent the CD mix without risking the counter hit while standing too. So they might back up first, then react to what you do. In this case, you can use your crouch dash to bait your opponent into whiffing. Also, just look at how Goetz like blocks something and then responds with raw back turn here. So that's cool and all, but what about getting low parried? I said it myself that everyone's trying to low parry the back turn down for. Truthfully, most of us are getting low parried for being too predictable. We also pilot to back turn down for too much. We can take this whole mind game a step further to get around that by making the timing of back to down forward game in itself. This next step just needs a shift in thinking. So rather than trying to cash out on something beefy for big damage, you could opt to keep your opponent in a disadvantageous position for an extended period. What do I mean by this? Most opponents just come in thinking that they have to only guess right once to get out of the back turn mix that they just have to duck the throw or block the unsafe mid and be done with them. 
But what if those big moves never come? What if Raven just keeps going, and before you know it, you're dead? You must demonstrate to your opponent that they actually can't afford to be patient, but if they're too hasty, they risk getting countered. That's what makes the situation ambiguous. For the opponent, they must act, they just don't know when. For you, this means holding off for a bit on moves that kill pressure or reset the situation to neutral, like back turn 1-2 or back turn throat. You can decide when you want to cash out. The trick is simply not to cash out straight away. I know this is getting quite intricate, but I'm just showing how deep this rabbit hole goes. This is where being creative really shines, and pays off handsomely without you needing to make a blind gamble. But you must always start off simple, then work your way up from there as the opponent catches on. And you don't always need to score big. You could be confident the opponent won't press, but maybe you're not confident on the 50-50. You can opt for smaller options, such as crouch dash into down forward 1, or down back 2, or side step down back 2, or crouch dash into raw back turn, then back turn down 4 again, to play around with the timing. Or you could crouch dash, then immediately back dash, to see how the opponent responds. But what matters most is your observation skills. To close off, if you want to dig more into back turn sequences, I recommend heading over to the new Tekken Wiki. It's meant to be a replacement for the now defunct Tekken Zaibatsu forums. I've written in-depth guides there, breaking down her neutral and back turn stance, as well as explaining different strategies such as the one covered in this video. They are pretty lengthy, but you ninjas need to. Thanks for watching.